before I came to Moha, the only thing that I knew about this place was that it was the most northern town in all of China bordering Russia. And they say that I might be able to see the northern lights from here. So I'm hoping that I will see them. But in the meantime, I'm just looking forward to spending some time in a place that only gets a couple of hours of nighttime over the summer months. Welcome to Travelog. I'm Michelle Lean. Located on the border of the Dangsheng Anling or Greater Xing'an Mountains region, Moha is a small county in Heilongjiang province that has long been regarded as a place that's way off the beaten track. So while many people may have dreamt of visiting the most northerly town in China, few dared to brave the 20-hour train ride from Harbin. But that all changed in 2008 when Moha Airport opened. Nowadays, it's pretty accessible since there are direct flights from most major cities in China to Harbin, from where you can take an hour and 40 minutes flying hop to Moha. Flights to Moha are only once or twice a day depending on the season, so make sure you plan your trip well. The name Moha, meaning black ing in Chinese, derives from the black debris-filled Heilongjiang River that runs through the area. While most people visit this northern town in the hope of getting a glimpse of the northern lights and experiencing the extreme winter and snowfall, few know that Moha has spectacular scenery all year round. In whichever season you come, it will take your breath away. It's the coldest place in China with temperatures dropping below minus 50 in winter. This extreme climate earned Moha the nickname China's North Pole Village. I didn't expect a place dubbed North Pole Village to have many hotels, let alone four-star establishments. So I was happy to discover there are many hotels and hostels spread across town. We stayed at the Jinma Hotel, the most luxurious hotel in town, and I can safely tell you that it comes up to par with most four-star hotels in China's major cities. Now, if you don't fancy a Chinese breakfast, there is a continental menu available throughout the day. And for those of you who are internet dependent like I am, you'll be happy to know there's a connection in all the rooms. You may be way up north, but don't worry, you'll still be connected to the outside world. One of the first things you'll notice about Moha town is that the main street is filled with new European-style buildings meant to emphasize Moha's proximity to Russia. That they had to be built in the first place was due to the Great Fire of 1987 that wiped out virtually the entire county. I head over to a museum in town dedicated to the fire to find out a little more about the devastation which was wrought on the entire Greater Xing'an Mountains area, not just Moha. It's shocking to hear that it took 28 days to fight the fire after it started on the 6th of May, 1987, a date that is ingrained in the minds of the locals. The Great Fire swept across an area of over 1 million hectares, wiping out everything in its path, forests, towns, and homes, and claiming 211 lives. Can you imagine all this pain and wreckage just because of one cigarette? The fact that this museum stands here today is living proof that people can overcome anything. You know, tourists and locals both can come here and remember this day, but they know that outside, it's everything is being rebuilt. Be warned, some of the images in the museum are quite graphic and leave little to the imagination. Still, it portrays the devastating incident well. In Moha, the only places left standing were a school, a toilet, a graveyard, and a portion of the forest. This area here in the middle of town is full of pine trees and strangely enough, it's one of the four places that didn't burn down during the Great Fire. If you go around, most of these trees are pretty much older than I am. This is one of the only ones that I've found that's around my age. It's not by accident that a grove of pine trees lies in the heart of town. After the fire, the town was rebuilt around this surviving patch of green as a reminder of Moha's past. Most of the trees here are several hundred years old, and while they lack the presence one would expect of trees that age, don't let their size fool you. The climate here only allows these pine trees to grow a little every year. 
，那不是桂林嘞？那不从小就知道有漠河，有北极点，还有北极光。我们的生长从小就是在南方，就想来感受一下我们国家最北的这个生活。Walking through town, I chance upon a local market, something I never ever say no to. Oh, this is what it's all about. Local markets are so great. Wherever you go, you need to go to a local market. It's where you can find things that, you know, are special to the area. For example, let me see, where are they? I just saw it just now. Oh, pine nuts? You can get a lot of them here. Mm, oops. For those of you who are into organic produce, you'll be happy to know that most of the nuts here are grown locally or picked straight from the surrounding forest. I don't think I've seen that many different types of mushrooms anywhere. I was starting to wonder why I didn't recognize most of the mushrooms, but I'm told they're actually wild mushrooms from the nearby forest and are known for their medicinal properties. She says these are way better than these. So these are like the best mushrooms anywhere. I've been told there's a traditional Russian bread house in town. And who am I to say no to a few carbs? Hello,你好。你好。这个你们家做的吗?自己做的。自己发面,揉面,自己做的。你怎么样学这个的?这个学从小跟着妈妈学会的。你妈是俄罗斯人吗?俄罗斯人。哦。有什么不一样的?我想
The railway system plays a key role in these less accessible northern regions. It transports the coal and wood from the towns up north down to the central regions of China. In Heilongjiang province, there are 60 railway lines, including a section of the Eurasian Land Bridge, which is a railway connecting China and eastern Russia with seaports in Western Europe. You see these? They're so old school, like there are booths and like tables and stuff. And you want to check out these fans. Look up. Look up. Wow. I love those. This is really vintage. It's like a vintage train. So I heard that you can go from Moha town to Gulian, which is the most northern stop in all of China. This trip is turning out to be one where my compass is constantly pointing north. I'm headed to the northernmost railway station in China. Seeing as the trains aren't particularly packed, I can be a little bit more inquisitive about my fellow passengers. He tells me that he walks the route from Gulian to Moha town, checking the track for problems every day, no matter what the weather's like or how cold it gets. I'm really moved by his evident devotion and good nature when he speaks of his job. I don't think many people would be able to maintain such optimism when it's minus 40 degrees out. <laughs> so he's just said that it's an 18 kilometer walk back to Moha and it'll take about eight hours. So I'll see you in eight hours. Turns out, Gulian is a coal mining town. And while it's not much of a tourist destination, I think it's worth the short journey just for the ride to the most northerly railway stop in China. For those of you without time constraints, consider taking the train. It's the best way to see the magnificent forests of northern China, which cover a large part of Moha County. From Gulian, I traveled down to a logging area. Yes, I know it's a very unusual place to visit, but after the Great Fire, a lot of emphasis was placed on environmental protection and sustaining the regenerated forest areas. While I'm not the greatest campaigner for environmental causes, I still think that it's important that we all work to reduce our carbon footprint, and I figured it'd be interesting to check out one of the main industries.